I am joined by Mark Winkle. He is here to talk to me about something that I fight with my kids a lot. <laughs> that is video gaming. <laughs> but video gaming to the next level. He's actually the esports coordinator at Howard Community College. And I have to admit, Mike, um, Mark, for me, it, it was it was it's really difficult to accept, you know, um, gaming as part of like sport and look at it as as you know athletes um i think i belong to that generation that is still not fully comfortable with the gaming and all of that and and to see this take a whole new life and and a whole new approach and, and make it into sport and to know that now there's student athletes who can belong to this um it's new for me it's really really new for me it's really it's really i'm still like you know, trying to fully understand it. And I'm really glad that we're having this conversation because um, that's where the new generation is going. I know that's where my kids are going. That's where, like, I, I was telling you right before we went on air, my son plays Rocket League, which is one of the games that HEC will be offering, um, you know, in the upcoming semesters. And it's, it's very new to me. It's very, very new to me. So thank you for taking the time to speak with me, for opening, help me, help me open my mind and understand this new era that's coming of athletes and how this whole world of esports really works. Um, but before we really go into that, I really want to get to know you a little bit. And I mean, you know, what's your connection with this? Were you part of my team until you became fully involved with it? Have you always been a gamer? You know, tell us a little bit about it, Mark. Well, first of all, I, uh, I can let you off the hook a little bit. You are not the only one that is struggling with the identity of esports being a real athletics program and they are student athletes. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it, there's certainly a, a lot of people who feel that way, but fortunately uh, we are here to try to dismiss that uh, preconceived notion. Um, as far as myself, I've always been stuck between the two worlds of playing video games, but also being a sports guy. And the, like growing up, I knew I wanted to do one of those two things. And now look at me, lucky enough, I'm able to do both where I get to work in the athletics department and uh, be the esports coordinator at Howard Community College. So I'm living the dream right now. Absolutely. And, you know, I think that for a lot of new younger generation kids, they're probably stuck with you where, you know, with my son, my son plays soccer and that's his sport. His, his sport is soccer. And he devotes a lot of time to soccer. I would probably say as much time as he devotes to the, to his game console, to his Xbox and, and to these other um, games that he's playing. Right. And, and I'm always finding myself like, but you know, you got to go out and train and you got to go out and, and, and exercise and you got to go out and do this. And you're sitting there and playing this game. Well, now that I know about esports, it's like, wow, he could really make a career out of this if he, if he wanted to. So should I be encouraging him to play more? <laughs> you know, like it's changing me even as a mom. And, and it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. So for those who maybe don't know, right, let's, let's just dive right into esports and explain what esports is. So first of all, I want to uh, say I always believe in a balance. I always encourage all of my esports student athletes Make sure you get your outside time. Try to keep your mind, body, uh, everything going right. Um, so I always, always encourage that. I don't want people to just sit in front of a computer for 20 hours a day. Um, so I, I do encourage absolutely, you know, go out, go to the gym. Um, we, we actually, uh, as part of our uh, preseason regimen, we have ways of trying to get your body in shape, how to handle the stress of competitive esports because it is stressful. Um, there's also the preconceived notion by some parents that watching a screen too long, esports, you know, video games will rot your brain. It actually is quite the opposite. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> I, I'm here to tell you that it's quite the opposite. It actually stimulates your mind, um, especially when you're talking about certain games where their minds, when they're playing these games, are running a mile a minute. You're learning all these sorts of things about how to have coordination, about team play, about um, being able to do things, just split second decisions and having your mind and your hands work in cohesiveness. It's actually quite an amazing thing. Uh, there's, uh, if, if you watch the difference between like the really good video gamers and people who don't play, they're just, their minds work just a little bit slower, I hate to say it, 
because or the people that don't play video games as much because there is just that constant training of your mind to make those quick decisions and always be thinking on your feet, always keep moving. It's uh, it's it's quite a fascinating thing to watch. You know, it's really interesting that you say that because it's one of the things that I tell my kids. But one of my concerns is that when they when they're not on their um, consoles, when they're not playing, when they're not you know being stimulated by some sort of uh, screen. And they get bored easy. And so I, that's how I see it. I'm like, well, that's because you're so used to being in front of a screen that you, your brain doesn't know what to do when you're not in front of a screen. So, you know, as a concerned parent, I guess, and this is not where I wanted to take, I did not want this to become an, you know, a session here, a therapy session for mom <laughs> in the conversation. But it's, it's, it's something that is valid because, um, you know, as parents who grew up in a generation that was playing outside all the time that did not have this consoles necessary. If we did, we only played for like very short periods of time. How do we support our children, you know, when they're going into this as we want them to be active, engage in other things. And, and um, we see that they get bored when they're not in that. And, and, and that brings concern. You know, and it's, it's, it, I'm glad you bring up the parent side of it because we are a varsity athletics uh, program and like any other program when when I'm recruiting kids there are times where I need to recruit the parents just as much as the the student athletes because they need to understand what we're doing here just like our basketball soccer lacrosse coaches they need to talk to parents all the time and let them know that I'm the coach and I've got your kids best interest in mind um, same way I've I've had to talk to parents here and there and let them know listen yes this is a serious program it's legitimate I do care about balance. I care about your kids' academics, about all these things. I'm not just here to just say, you know, like I said, go, go sit in front of a computer and play video games all day. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I want our student athletes to get a full collegiate experience, and that includes getting good grades in the classroom, practicing with your teammates, having that social aspect, because one of the th reasons why we chose the three games that we are sponsoring um, at least in team play, we are also going to be uh, looking to have some particip excuse me, participants in the Madden and FIFA tournaments. But the three games we're really focusing on are Rocket League, Overwatch, and League of Legends. The thing that all three of those games have in common, they're team games. They're all about teamwork. Everybody's got a role. Fill your role. Work together. Communicate. And we felt that w that was very important to have that aspect and uh, to really encourage that feeling of teamwork um, the same way we would any other varsity program. I have made sure all of our preseason practices, our workouts, our, we're, I'm having the kids get physicals. Every way we're treating this is like it's any other varsity athletics team. Uh, just, you know, it's, it's more sitting in front of a computer instead of kicking a ball or running after a ball. But in the end, it's the same thing, um, just less running and more eye-hand coordination. And thank you for bringing that awareness and that idea, because it's, it's, it's difficult to think of it as, as that. But I have to say, you know, while being home and, I mean, really interaction for my, for my son has come from playing with his friends and, and I hear them communicating and you know they're over there they're over here watch out for this go to the ride I got I got the kick out and you go for the bounds or you know things like that so it's so I do hear some of that strategic planning that I did not think video gaming offered um, and it's been it's been a learning experience for me as I've I've seen and, and again this is a 13 year old son who's just playing for fun he's not doing this competitively of, or anything like that but I can already see some of that in the social aspect, especially as we continue to be home, um, has been key for his mental health. So I have come to appreciate that um, and be a little more open to the video gaming world, quite honestly, thanks to COVID. So maybe COVID, <laughs> you know, that's one of the benefits of COVID that it's opened the mind for many parents um, to the gaming world. Um, so why did we decide to bring esports to Harry Community College? You know, where did that come from? So this has been a, a personal quest of mine for the last four or five years at the uh, different colleges that I've worked at. Um, obviously, being around video games my whole life, I could very easily see what the booming industry of video games could do, especially at the collegiate level. Um, I was at Harford Community College for a couple years, and I 
tried to convince the athletic director there, and he was he was not having it. He was of the old school mindset of video games are not sports, so that wasn't happening. Um, and then I was hired back at Howard Community College two years ago, and one of the first things I said to our athletic director Aaron Foley was, "Hey, we should take a look at this esports thing. It's 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 going to hit big. It really is." And somehow word got up to the school president, uh, Dr. Hetherington, and she did some research. I'm not exactly sure how that worked out, but I know for a fact that she came out of a meeting one day and said, we need to get esports at Howard Community College. And after that, it was amazing to see the mobilization of so many different departments around campus that all came together to make this happen in a short amount of time. We had IT, marketing and outreach, admissions, um, networking. We had all these different people from different departments. Um, project, project manager, I got to give a, a shout out to a couple of guys, Matthew Palowitz and Travis Hopkins. They've been amazing to really put this whole thing together. And uh, combined with the presence team, it just, we had so, so much support. And unfortunately, our plans to build a beautiful new esports arena kind of got uh, delayed because of the coronavirus. But um, that it, the plan is still going to be uh, put into place at some point when we're back on campus, but we still were able to have a remote fall team this week, this uh, year, which is really nice since we're uh, the only athletics team really competing in the fall. So we uh, get to have all of the eyes and ears on eSports this fall. That's going to be fun. Um, I just, I, I can't express enough how grateful I am to so many people around the campus for coming together and making this dream a reality. And the vision of Dr. Dr. Hetherington and athletic director Aaron Foley to say, yes, we can make this happen. We want to make this happen. And um, as far as me, it's just, uh, I, was, I was just the one that I was advocating for it. And then they said, okay, now we need somebody to run it. Hey, Mark, you've been advocating for this. You're a, you're a video game nerd. You're, just, just take it. It's yours. <laughs> Go for it. What do you need? And uh, I've just ran with it ever since. And it's been, it's been great so far. Can't wait to get the season started. Share with us a little bit about that culture, about, you know, that community of esports. What does it look like right now? Are other colleges already in the esports world? Is this more of a professional um, arena type of um, field right now? Uh, where, how is it developing? So it's both. Um, it, at the professional level, it's, it's amazing. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. They've got prize pools and millions of dollars for uh, video game tournaments and all this. So it's, it's a massive industry. The college uh, level is a little bit behind simply because the NCAA is not able to sponsor it because of amateurism laws. Because if, if any of these kids are making money in any way, if they have a YouTube channel and make five cents off of streaming a game on YouTube, which basically all of these kids do, then by NCAA laws, they're not eligible to play. So what has happened in the college level is other organizations have taken over the roles of sponsoring esport leagues and tournaments, all these things that are not directly associated with NCAA. Um, now the NJCAA, who we are associated with, have already eliminated the amateurism laws for esports, knowing that this is a, a problem. Um, I know the NCAA is on its way towards doing the same because I think they're uh, they're missing out on how big of an opportunity this is and they don't want to do that for much longer but for now that is why it's been a little bit behind in the college level but there are hundreds of colleges around the country that are booming right now um, with esports and recognizing this um, some of them only have it as like a club sport under student activities some have it as a varsity athletics team it's a little little different from school to school but the most exciting part about this is we will have the opportunity to play esports against big, big colleges. I've already been in discussions with Hood College, with UCLA, with Virginia Tech, with Army, all about having some scrimmages, setting up some games for our different sports. And I mean, can you just imagine Howard Community College going up against UCLA and us competing? I mean, this is, we're, we're going to have a competitive team. It's not like we're just going to be up and like, okay, yeah, they can you know, get this as a, uh, a practice game, a warm up. No, we're, we're going to be right there with them. We're going to compete with them. And uh, I think it's just an exciting opportunity that really no other sport has the opportunity to do. 
It sounds really exciting. And it sounds like uh, it's going to level, as you were saying, basically, you know, every school and in, in which other sports have not had that opportunity to do. So um, I'm excited for that. You mentioned the games that you guys are bringing into HDC right now. Um, tell us a little bit for those who might not be versed in the gaming world, you know, what those games are about. So like I said, we are going to have um, participants in the Madden, which is the football game for esports, as well as FIFA, the soccer game. But those are more just uh, having uh, student athletes kind of represent us. Um, as far as the team games go, there's Rocket League, which is basically a three versus three game of remote control soccer. And it's it's a really a fun sport to watch um, just, and just spectate because you just you're ha they have rocket boosters they can fly through the air and they're trying to hit this giant ball into a goal and it's really fast paced and just a lot of fun to watch. Um, we we also have League of Legends, which is considered a online battle arena game, so it's going to be five versus five and teams of uh, five champions each uh, one person controls a champion and they're running around the board. They're trying to basically get to the other team's side to destroy their crystal at the end. But it's basically like, again, it's all about team play. It's all about their roles that they fill about uh, how they can work together. Um, and it's, it's, it's a bit chaotic at times, but it's a really, it's a fun team game. And then the last one is Overwatch, which is um, considered like a first person shooter, but it's more of a, cartoony kind of shooter so there's no blood there's no real feeling of violence more so than just you know watching a cartoon um and that's six for six and again a lot of that team play everybody's filling a role you've got tanks you've got support healers you've got shooters and you've got people who are trying to do the damage and you have to fill uh fulfill goals of moving a target or capturing a an area and Again, it just it if if nothing else, I would love for people to be able to listen in on the conversations that our teams have during these games. It's just it's it's fantastic to hear all of the ways that they communicate, that they work together, and hearing six people all on one chat together. It's again, it's that word I'm going to use. It's chaotic. To those who are uh, untrained, it is absolutely chaotic, and it's so fast paced. But it's a uh, it's there's there's a there's a method to it and it's it's going to be a lot of fun to watch i hope people are going to be able to tune in um we we are planning um one nice thing so we have joined the NECC the New England Collegiate Conference which is typically an NCAA Division 3 conference but they have invited us to join them for their esports league and they are planning on live streaming all the contests throughout the year so Fans of Howard Community College Dragon Esports, they'll be able to watch all of our games. They'll be able to cheer us on. Um, and it's just, it's, it's an exciting opportunity for us. We couldn't be happier with being able to join the NECC and really be able to publicize the uh, fantastic achievements that our, uh, our student athletes are going to be able to have out there. And that's one thing that really surprised me about this whole gaming, you know, world, that my son will come to YouTube and watch videos of other people playing. And I was like, why are you doing this? And he was like, mom, because I'm learning, you know, they're, they're sharing secrets, they're sharing things that they're doing at certain levels and how they pass, you know, there's one thing where I always get stuck and, you know, strategies. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> mm -hmm. like that's when I really started to learn how um, involved this really is and, and how much goes into it, you know, when he was actually coming and training himself, but watching videos on YouTube, which I thought was um, fascinating. Um, so walk us through the experience of playing esports at Howard Community College. You know, is this going to be seasonal? Is this going to be uh, something that's year round? Is this going to be per semester? Is it, are there tournaments? Um, you know, t tell us more about all that. Uh, the answer to all your questions there was yes. Um, basically, so through the NECC, they have their seasonal, um, their, their seasons. Um, so for Overwatch and League of Legends and Madden, they'll be during the fall semester. Rocket League and FIFA will be during the spring semester. But there are always opportunities for our teams to participate in invitationals and tournaments and other leagues and all these things that are available to them. And we're, I'm going to have them fully active all year long. Um, we have already, so our, like I said, the Rocket League season is usually in the spring for the, the NECC. 
we have been invited by Hood College to join their Rocket League league, for lack of a better word, <laughs> um, for the fall season. And uh, I, I have to, Hood College has been a huge help. Um, since this is our first year having esports, we're still trying to learn everything. We're trying to figure out all the kinks and their esports director over there, Chris Leonard, has been a huge help to me as a sort of mentor to say, hey, listen, we had to learn a lot of things the hard way. Here are some good ways for you to not have to do the same. Maybe you can learn them the easy way and not the hard way like we did. And he's been a huge help. So we're gonna, he's going to help us set up some scrimmages with all these teams and really work on how to be a better team by playing other teams that have been doing it for a while. Um, and that's going to be a lot of fun. But again, we're going to keep them active. Uh, make sure we, we're going to do grade checks and make sure their grades are all doing great. But as long as everybody's doing well academically, we are going to be playing in at least one competition every single week, whether it's a conference game, whether it's an invitational, a tournament of some kind. We're, we're, we're going to keep them active. Um, the other exciting thing is, is that as part of the esports, because like I said, we don't fall under the same amateurs and laws, we will occasionally have them in tournaments where there are prize pools. And any money that they win in these prize pools will got, go back to our student athletes in the form of scholarship money. So that's an opportunity that no other sport at the collegiate level right now is able to do. And uh, it's just, it's another uh, recruiting tool I get to use to say, yeah, you, you come play for us and you can go out and win yourself some scholarship money. So yeah, there's no better way to motivate them to keep practicing and keep learning than, uh, you know, having that in front of them. Um, besides the fact that, again, it's just, it's the, the aspect of playing for your teammates, playing for your brothers and sisters on the team. And you're, it's, there's already a lot of uh, chemistry that's going on there. And everybody just wants to get better. They want to hold their teammates to a higher standard. They want to hold themselves to a higher standard. And whoever the best player on the team is, everybody wants to get up to that level. That best player, they, they're trying to get even better. And it's just, like you said, um, watching YouTube videos, watching other teams play. Um, it's no different than watching a soccer game or a baseball game with the pros and seeing, hey, this is how they're doing it. You know, maybe watching training videos on how they're trying to get better. Same thing. There's always a way to get better. And if you're, uh, if you're not getting better, you're probably getting worse. So how far can you go as an eSport athlete? I know that, you know, when students come to HCC, they want to transfer to a four-year school and they want to go and they want to play on those teams and, you know, professional, hopefully get to those levels, right? Um, is there a clear path here for an eSport athlete? Oh, absolutely. Um, probably more so than any other sport, um, just because, again, with eSports, there's a much more le level playing field. And there's the opportunities for our kids to get exposure, unlike any other sport. Esports are being watched internationally by millions of people. So why wouldn't you, you know, watch a Rocket League game between Howard Community College and UCLA and say, oh, these guys are pretty good. Wait, they're at a two-year college. That means in two years, they're going to need to find a four-year college to go to. Um, just like any other of the coaches at Howard Community College, I am fully dedicated to getting our student athletes to a four-year school. If that's where they want to go, they want to keep playing. Um, and from there, they will have every opportunity to get into the professional realm. Um, fortunately for esports, again, there's just that online feel or um, publicity that's so easy for professional teams to be able to scout out and seek out new players. And it's just, it's, it's that much easier. Um, now, for, unfortunately, because it's such a booming industry, there's a whole lot of people that want to do it. But there's for those that are at the top of the game that are able to really do it, there's every opportunity for them to really get to that level. And I will do everything I can to help them. And that's where my next question was going. You know, I mean, I'm, there's no kid that I know who does not play video games. Like, I haven't met any kids yet who don't play video games. So... How, can anybody come and register to play esports? Are do you guys have? How do you select? You know your team. So our esports program is going to be very inclusive. I do not want to turn anybody away that has a desire and a commitment to really be part of the team. Um, now we will have different levels. You know we we may end up having an A team, a B team, a C team, but I, anybody that wants to participate and really be part of the team. I'm never going to turn away a committed, dedicated player. Um, and fortunately, right now, we've got reserves for all of the games that we have. Um, we're close to being able to have two full teams for every game. Then I can submit two full teams to all these tournaments and things. So it's being able to keep increasing our numbers. 
Um, I'm hoping at some point I can get some assistant coaches to uh, help me out because right now we are at 23, I believe, committed esports student athletes that I am all coaching by myself for over five different games. So it's, it's, it's definitely a lot. And that's another one of those preconceived notions that are not true is that, oh, well, all video games are the same. You know, I'm sure one kid can just play all the games and you don't really need to coach them just because, you know, it's, it's a video game. That's not true. All of these games are very, very different. They require very different sets of knowledge and skills to be able to do them correctly. And while I'm doing my best to coach up all of our student athletes the best I can in all five games, it's not an easy thing to do, especially when they're either practicing at the same time or, you know, practicing all over the place. And it's a, it's a whole lot, but fortunately um, I've been lucky enough right now. We have some great team captains and the student athlete leadership of the teams has been phenomenal so far. And I've been able to lean on them a little bit better. Um, and especially even on the early outset here of being able to really let them kind of coach themselves in some ways, because in many ways, all of these kids are better than me. They're better than I'll ever be. Um, so I try to just have the knowledge base of saying, okay, how can you get better from a technical aspect, from a knowledge, from a communication aspect? Like you said earlier, is that all that communication for our lesson plans for, for the week, I would say over half of it is about communication. How are we going to communicate? You know, what are the best ways of making sure that we are communicating the best we can? Because as I said, it's, these are fast paced games. They're happening split second decisions, but we still need to communicate and work together. And that's a huge, huge part of it. So it's just, it's, it's been a challenge, like I said, but the, uh, the student athletes have been great so far. And the dedication, like I said, is, it's been amazing to see how much they want to do the best they can. They want to make this work. And uh, I'm, I'm hoping that they really just bring their games up enough where we, we can get them to higher and higher levels. That would be, that'd be great to see, actually. Um, are there specific requirements for students to register? You know, is there like a certain GPA that they need to be enrolled in a, a number of credit classes at the, at the school? Is this for non-credit students as well? So we, we hold our esports students to the same requirements as any other NJCAA student athlete. So they have to be a full-time enrolled student, 12 credits or more. They have to have a 2.0 GPA or higher. They have to have passed a certain number of credits if they're into their second year. Um, so that, yeah, we, we hold them to the same eligibility and compliance standards as any other student. Um, like I said, they get preseason physicals, they go through all the eligibility paperwork and they, we hold them to the same standard. Um, and fortunately we, we've had a great support from our athletics department. Um, Mike Smelkinson, our eligibility and compliance coordinator We've got Shannon Riley, who's our academic success coordinator for athletics. They've been a big help in making sure that our esports students, athletes really know, hey, this is what you need to be eligible, this is what you need to be able to participate. And they've been very uh, responsive and helpful in the whole process. You've talked about the commitment uh, quite a bit. So I wanted, and, and you mentioned at the beginning as well that you know, you're looking at the grades, you're looking at the physical well-being as well. So I wanna talk a little bit about that and, and see how you're encompassing all of that and putting it all together. Uh, so when a student athlete comes and joins, because there's one thing to just play for fun and just be home and you know, I hang out with my friends and that's what we do when we have time in our, in our hands, right? Uh, but there's, it sounds like there's something very different and unique about being an esport athlete. And I want to talk about that commitment and what that program looks like and, you know, what, how you encompass the studying, the grades, the physical well-being, as, as well as the training for the, for the esports that they're playing on. So um, tell, us, tell us a little bit about what that commitment looks like. So the, the commitment, we, we have two hour practices, four days a week. Um, where there's scheduled times, everybody gets on and we're playing as a team. We have practice plans, we have lesson plans, we have uh, research that they're expected to do beforehand. You know, I'll send out videos and be like, okay, here's how we can get better. Here's what we're gonna work on this week, come prepared. Um, I, like I said, I, I can't stress this enough. We treat it as if we are a varsity athletics team. And you know, if, if, if a basketball player is gonna show up and doesn't understand the defense, the set plays, all of the things that they're gonna be expected to do on the court, they're not gonna play. They're just, they don't have that level of dedication to re really, you know, they could be 
an incredible shooter of the basketball, but if you don't understand what the team is doing, they're not going to play. Same thing with esports, really understanding what our team strategies are, what our team chemistry is, being able to have that dedication of knowing this is what we're going to do, this is what we plan to do, and going out there and practicing it and practicing it and then practice it some more and keep practicing it. Um, one of the, the great lines I love is uh, by Vince Lombardi, we're going to seek perfection, but in the process gain excellence. Um, and that's what we're going to do. We're, we're, we're going to try to seek perfection. We're going to do our best to see how can we be perfect in playing these games. We're not going to get to perfection. You, nobody can. But in the process, we're really going to try to, to gain that excellence in our field. And as, you, as I, I keep saying it over and over, that dedication of understanding that it's about the team. It's always about the team. I don't care, you know, if you're playing a League of Legends game and you go out there and you die 20 times, if you fulfilled your role on the team and helped the team win, you did your job. And understanding that, and uh, th that comes with practice, it comes with time. And fortunately, like I said, our, our student athletes have already been gaining that. Um, we have another month of preseason during August to get ready for the September placement tournaments. And uh, we're, we'll, be, we'll be ready for them, I promise you that. So, you know, I have a question here um, that says, why should students consider playing esports? And I think that that has become clear through our conversation. I am going to give you the opportunity to answer that. But I also want you to touch into what parents, especially since you mentioned that you have to recruit the parents. And I can see as a mother myself, a little bit more resistance from the parents more than the kids themselves. So why should both students and parents consider joining uh, esports? So first of all, one of my favorite things about esports is a lot of times the esport athletes are not your traditional athletes. Um, my, look, if you looked at me in person, I, uh, I'm, I'm a very scrawny guy. I was not built with a, a professional athlete's body. Um, despite my, I always wanted to be a professional athlete. That was my dream when I was growing up. Didn't work out that way. Um, and for kids like me who just weren't born with that physical specimen uh, of being able to handle that level, it gives another opportunity for them to really find their way of getting into competitive sports without having that perfect specimen body. And I think that's my favorite part about it is just being able to give every kid an opportunity to play competitive sports, play with a team to really feel that collegiate experience and it, it it can be anybody you know I, I it we don't we don't discriminate in any way shape or form if you're good enough if you can dedicate yourself to getting good at it you're going to be on the team you're going to be competing you're going to be participating you're it's it just it's it's a different feeling of being able to really be inclusive and i've always enjoyed that part of it and I think as a mom, it's nice to hear that because, um, you know, I, my son is, is a great athlete and, and he's the type of boy that any, t any sport that you give him, he will play. My daughter, on the other hand, she is more of a brain person, right? And she is not so much in the physical stuff. So she's always been that kid that you just mentioned who is brilliant in so many ways, but sports are just not her thing. That's just not her build. She's just, you know, not, not. And I'm sorry, I'm putting her down right now, but she really is just not the greatest when it comes to sports. Um, she's brilliant in many other ways, but I do think that she was feeling a little bit left out because she was just not, you know, fitting in with all of these other sports. And this is an opportunity. Absolutely. I can see how she would have excelled in, you know, an environment like this and just do really, really, really well. So um, I love that um, inclusiveness that esports brings as a mom. So, you know, where do I sign up? I'm already sold. <laughs> we are very proud of our female student athletes uh, for all of our sports, but especially um, our esport ones. It's, 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 it's really great to help balance it out again it's just it's being able it's we're the only sport where there the men and women are competing at the same level against each other at the same time and seeing that our women are better than so many men out there at this it's just it's another way it's that inclusivity it's that that unique opportunity that esports provide and uh it's 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 fun to watch um i it's it's great because i don't have to really feel like there's no 
differential treatment at all. There's, there, she, our, our females just fit right in. Um, and the, the teamwork, again, it's, they, 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 they all appreciate the fact that we're all just teammates. We're all, we're all together in this. There's no differential treatment at all. It's, it's really a, a fun, fun atmosphere. You know, Espe there's an age requirement for sports and, you know, this is different and, and this is totally different than anything that I've seen so far. And I know we have a lot of non-traditional students who probably would not want to go in and join in traditional sports or maybe because they work or, you know, the schedule. I mean, there's just so many other variables with our non-traditional students. Are there such requirements here uh, for esports? Nope, not at all. Um, all we require is that they have to be graduated from high school or have a GED. So I've actually had multiple Howard County High School students who are taking some classes at Howard Community College reach out to me and say, hey, I'm a Howard Community College student. Can I play esports too? Unfortunately, rules state that we, uh, you need to be graduate high school or have a GED first. Um, so I'm just encouraging them, all right, just graduate high school, then come finish at Howard Community College yeah, and you're in. Um, but yeah, you're right. Uh, in the terms of the non-traditional students, we actually, we have a military veteran on one of our teams and who is definitely uh, older than your traditional college student, but he's right there with the rest of the student athletes. Um, he's full-time student uh, and competing right there with the kids and he's doing a great job. He's provided some uh, of that again, that, that, um, that veteran mentorship, that mm -hmm. leadership, um, the maturity that uh, it helps. And a lot of the kids have gravitated to that, which is great. But yeah, we, I, again, I can't stress this enough. We are an inclusive team and uh, I, don't, I don't care what you look like, where you come from. If, you, if you're dedicated, you wanna play, you're, you're on the team and uh, it's, it's been fun. It's, it really has. Uh, I remember I showed the, when I got the um, prospective student athlete form from that gentleman and I saw him like, am I reading this wrong? Like, what do you think? And I, I had a conversation with him about it and immediately was drawn to him. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is a guy that we have to have on the team. Everybody's gonna love this guy. And yeah, you know, might not be 18, 19, 20 years old, but right there with everybody else, you, you know, if, you, if you're listening in on the, uh, the team chat, you'll never know who, who it is until you really listen to it, but it just is right there with them. And uh, I think he gets to enjoy getting some of his, uh, his college days back and really getting to feel like a college student right there with them. As a non-traditional student myself, you know, I can definitely see how this would um, give an opportunity for somebody who feels maybe intimidated to go back to school. Uh, if, it is, if you're playing at home, if you are a gamer uh, and you want to go back to school, but it's intimidating, you know, to make that decision. There's a, there's a platform here where you can really come and be part of, of college and, and, you know, feel in that community and just belong that to that community and, and, and really make a difference. And, and you're right, that... Um, balance and that sharing of generations is invaluable. I mean, that on its own is something that's worth more than any price can pay where, you know, the non-traditionals where I was, we, you know, we feed so much from the students that we learn because they have that drive, that thirst, that, that, um, mm, that just, um, you know, that they can do everything. They can take the world. Right. Yep. And at the same time, they, from the non-traditional students, they, they gain a lot of that experience that we've gained. And, and it is, it's just a beautiful thing to watch. Can somebody play traditional sports and esports uh, in the same semester? So say you have a, a current athlete who is dedicated to, I don't know, um, soccer, and he wants to also become part of the esports team. Is that feasible? I mean, is, or is it too much time? Can that be done? It is done. Um, we have actually, I've I had multiple student athletes of other teams reach out to me for that very reason. Um, the first thing I always do is I talk to their other coach and just say, hey, are you okay with this? Do you think they can handle it? Um, and if, if they feel it's okay, then uh, absolutely. I, I welcome it, especially again for this fall when we uh, were having to delay our f traditional fall sports because of the coronavirus. And I've said this, and yeah, absolutely. Um, as long as your grades are good, as long as you think you can handle it, uh, I'm all for it. If your grades start to slip, I, I'm I'm going to say you're you're not able to really participate or practice with the team because grades come first. We need to make sure that you're 
always eligible to play for whatever team you're competing with at Howard Community College. But as long as you're responsible enough, your grades are good, I, uh, I welcome it. Fortunately, we practice at later times. Typically, we're practicing like the 7 to 9 p.m. time frame, whereas most of our traditional sports teams are practicing in the mid-afternoon. So the timing works out well if they're able to handle it all. And uh, like I said, I, I want to encourage everybody who has an interest and wants to be dedicated to it to sign up and we'll, we'll find a way to make it work. Uh, I just, I, the more the merrier, I'm, I'm really enjoying how many of the uh, teammates that we're bringing together. So absolutely. Let's look at the future. Um, you know, where do you see eSports at Howard Community College going? I mean, if, if you could just have that perfect plan where you're like, okay, we're starting here, but this is where we're going and where we're going to end up and where we're going to land. Uh, what does that look like? Well, first of all, I'm really excited to get our eSports arena set up. Um, it's going to be a uh, right in the Galleria. So right in the middle of like the student act, uh, center activities area. Uh, there's right there next to where there's that big screen TV and there's all the seating there. We've already talked about trying to stream some of our games when they're playing on those big TVs so that any students that are walking by can watch us and cheer us on. So there's a unique aspect of that in that we're really going to be like right in the middle of the student center area. Um, so that I'm really looking forward to. Um, again, we've, we've had a lot of resources put in. Um, and we're going to have that to be a top-notch facility. I've talked to other four-year colleges, and I've told them about what our esports arena is going to look like, and they're jealous of us. So the uh, it's going to be it's really going to be a great facility once we get that going. As far as further out than that, I, it just depends on how well we do, how smooth things are. We can always keep adding more and more games. We can keep adding more tradition or more um, video games, more participants we can have multiple teams like i said we can just keep adding on to it there is really no limit to what we can do with this um as long as we have the resources we um like i said i, I need some more assistant coaches at, that's at some point because it's a, a lot for me to handle in addition to all of my other duties with the athletics department because i am the sports information and game operations manager so in addition to all that i'm also taking on the esports and it can be a lot but uh I'm, I'm hoping that we can just keep adding to it. There's, there's no reason we can't. Uh, I, I've seen some really, really good programs that are turning their kids, like you said, into professionals. Why can't we? We have every opportunity to do that. Howard County has a whole lot of opportunities in terms of the public school systems and whatnot to help. I've already had high school athletic directors from Howard County reach out to me saying, hey, we're looking into starting esports. Uh, what advice would you give us? How can you help? You know, can we set up some kind of partnership, a pipeline, all that? Absolutely. I'm helping them. We have other community colleges in Maryland that have reached out to me asking how the experience is. They want to add it. And I think there's a lot of people that are uh, looking at us as the gopher and uh, trying to uh, see how we are doing things. And then, sorry, the guinea pig, wrong rodent. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and they're really trying to see, all right, you know, if, if Howard Community College can make this work, then we want to make this work too. And uh, anybody that takes one look into esports will see where this industry is going. It, it, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that this is the trend. This is where everything is leaning towards, like you said, how many kids have never played a video game in their lives? It's hard to find them anymore. And it's something that everyone can be a part of and everybody wants to be a part of. It's fun to watch. Like, you know, it's just like it's fun to watch soccer on TV. It's fun to watch baseball and basketball on TV. It is fun to watch esports on a computer, to watch teams to compete um, and have broadcasters get really excited for it, just like they would any other sport. It's just, it's fun. There, there's a level of a fun factor that I think surpasses some of the other traditional sports for those that can really appreciate it. And fortunately, the number of people that do appreciate it are growing every day. And, you know, playing is something that as adults, we tend to forget, right? We become as spectators and we just watch. This sport right here, I think that uh, gives us, at least it gives me the opportunity. There's been so many times that I sit down with my son and I have no clue what I'm doing. Like I have that control and he tells me A, B and this and that. I'm like, I, I don't know. Like I, I don't work that way. Um, but I it, allows you for trying. Me, <laughs> it allows me, you know, to have that 
that play time with my son and to get a little bit into his world and to hear, as you were saying, you know, the other kids talking and, and laughing and, you know, they, they don't appreciate that I'm not moving the car or like, <laughs> I don't know how to boost and things like that. But, um, but it, you know, again, it's, it's that interaction is that opportunity to really just, just for me to go back and just, just play and just kind of like forget about everything else and get in this world and, and try to drive this little car out that, that, that I just don't understand. And suddenly I'm turning around and things like that. But it's, it's just, um, if you haven't explored it, I guess what I'm trying to say to everybody watching and listening to this, I encourage you to do it. It's, you might find that you're really good. You might find that, you know, I don't necessarily think that I like it and I can't do it. I, I need something different a different type of game this 3d games are not my thing i used to play mario and i told my kids you know when mario jumped i jumped and obviously mario f fell because i was the one jumping at <laughs> mario so i've never been a gamer uh, but it's fun it's fun is an opportunity to really just um you know interact with the younger generation and it's really where the future is going uh, for games. You mentioned bringing different games and that you guys have selected a certain few. How do you select which games to bring into eSports at uh, Howard Community College? So the initial selection process was fun. It consisted of us uh, sending out surveys around to kind of gauge where the interest was. We knew that we really wanted to focus, like I said, on the team games and less on the individual games. Uh, we knew we wanted to go for games that had a better uh, moral compass to it. So we wanted to stay away from, like I said, the sh bloody, gory shooting games because it just doesn't really give the right message to our college students. And so we basically built around and we wanted ones that were popular. We wanted ones where we knew we could get a lot of people who are interested in. We could get a lot of other college sports or college teams to play against us where we're not scrounging around. All right, we have this game that nobody else plays. So that's not going to really help us much. Um, so that's really what we, where we focused on. And again, I give a lot of credit to our outreach program uh, department at Howard Community College in getting those surveys out and really helping us crunch the data and helping us make the best decision we could to pick the games that we did. And going forward, again, it's, it's going to be all about um, what games do kids want to play? Which ones fit the, the right ethics that we really want to have here as part of the department? Um, I do get emails constantly saying, hey, when are you guys going to have this game? When are you going to have this game? Can I, and well, you know, we're, we're limited right now on the number of games because, you know, we're limited in our resources. I collect all that data. I save it. I store it in the memory bank somewhere and say, okay, you know, when we're looking to add games, maybe we should look at this one because there's a lot of interest in that. Um, we also wanted to focus initially on per PC games because we were making a really big investment into nice PCs to have in the esports arena and not any consoles that could change in the future. Maybe we will invest in some console games and have more of that going forward. But for now, we were really focusing on just the PC games. So that's kind of where our mindset was. Again, there's room to grow. Uh, if, if we decide that we want to add some and add console games, we can, well, we can look into that. Uh, but for now, again, we want to just really focus on those team games, the ones that are going to bring in high membership and high interest and uh, have that fun visibility, watchability of it. It's all a learning process um, for everybody. You know, I know my son many times, he's like, mom, I need a new this, a new that, and then this is coming out, but this only plays in this console, this only plays in this. So that's the only reason I know, but the consoles and the PCs and this and that and the other, because he is teaching me. And that's the beautiful thing about this as well, that it has taught me as a mom that I can learn so much for my son, like I already knew that he could teach me many things, but you know, in this realm of um, esports and electronics and all of that, they really, they really get it much faster, much easier than the, than the parents do many times. So um, I, I appreciate that part about it uh, for, for sure. We are running out of time. We only have about uh, five more minutes left, but I do want to make sure that uh, students and parents know where to reach out and where to get more information if there's any questions that they have that we haven't answered today. Um, so tell us where we can connect with you guys. Well, first of all, I want to uh, thank your son for uh, helping uh, teach you up a little bit and preparing you for this interview. Clearly, uh, that's your, your number one source of material for uh, this research. And uh, he, he, he sounds like a very knowledgeable guy. I, I like him already. 
Um, as far as reaching out to me, uh, best way is just to email. Uh, my email is mwinkel at howardcc.edu. And uh, like I said, just send me an email. Uh, I'm always open to any ideas, new ideas coming out. Um, and we're, we're just, uh, I, I please encourage everybody to check out our website, www.howardccdragons.com. And there is an esports page on there that will have all of our schedules, all of our information. Uh, it will have all of the links to be able to watch the games online. We do have a Twitch account. We've got Twitter. We've got Facebook. We've got Instagram. So we'll be making sure to update all of those with all of our esport accomplishments going forward. And uh, like I said, the ways to be able to watch the games. So I highly encourage everybody to check those out. In addition to our other sports, are all on howardccdragons.com. But you know, right now I can't help but throw in a shameless plug for esports. So there it is. Absolutely. Do students need to have, you know, like my son's always about, mom, I need the latest console. I need a, I need a gaming chair. I need the headset. I need these. Do students need to have and be prepared with all of those sort of things? Or is this just my son trying to pull the latest technology out of his mom? <laughs> Both. <laughs> um, no, as of right now, like I said, the trouble is with the, the coronavirus hitting and with the fall sports all being remote, we are playing from home. So right now, yes, all of the, uh, equipment has to be provided by our student athletes um like but once we get back on campus and we have our esports arena they don't need anything other than to show up sit down in the chair and start playing um now obviously we uh we encourage them to also practice outside of normal practice time so it always helps to have your own equipment at home and be able to keep practicing keep getting better but um when we're back on campus we'll have everything we need right there in the esports arena so if somebody's considering joining and wants to get more information, what would they need right now to start for this upcoming semester? So the best thing to do, like I said, is reach out to me. Um, on our website, we have a prospective student athlete form. I always encourage people to go on there. Uh, there's a recruit tab under howardccdragons.com. Uh, go to the prospective student athlete form, fill it out. It takes a couple minutes, and that gives uh, all of our coaches for whatever sport you're wanting to participate in all the information they need to kind of get an idea of who the student athlete is. And then that way we can reach out to the student athletes and have a conversation about joining the team. So that's, you, that's just the best way to do it. Um, obviously it helps to also apply and be enrolled in the college since that's an important part of it. So if you're, uh, if you're not enrolled at Howard Community College, definitely get on that as well because that's an important part of it. But um, always, always encourage, uh, we always encourage our, uh, prospective student athletes to fill out that form and that way we can get all the information we need and get the process rolling. Absolutely. Uh, Mark, is there anything else that you would like to add before we wrap our conversation up today? Anything that maybe we forgot to cover or just anything that you want to tell, you know, everybody listening and watching today? Well, like I said, I'm just, I, I can't stress enough how thankful I am to uh, so many different people, to the people that have helped us out, the people, um, around, like I said, the, the NECC reaching out to us and having us join their conference. That was a huge part of it. Having other schools wanting to really encourage us and are supporting us and wanting us to do well. Um, our president's team here at Howard Community College, our athletics department, our admissions, um, our, the admissions staff has been a huge help. The financial aid staff, they've been a huge help because uh, we've been a little bit late in getting into the recruitment process and they've been really trying to help us get all of our student athletes in as soon as possible, as quick as possible, get them in there. Uh, I, I can't thank, enough. there's so many people to thank. Uh, this, this was a daunting task to get all of this ready. And then once coronavirus hit, it changed everything. We had to get all ready all over again. And, and uh, you know, even, even people like you for helping to uh, promote it. Uh, it it's, it's hard to hard to get student athletes if people don't know we exist and there's been so many people who have helped us to get the word out there and i just i'm thankful to everybody for uh, the team effort to get this to get this to happen absolutely it is my pleasure to to help you know um i think educate because this is a new thing this is um the kids understand and the kids know it but i don't think that the kids necessarily understand that they can take it into a next level you know maybe professional but now to know that it is offered in the college, that it can be part of that college experience. I think that that's 
huge uh, for a lot of kids um, to know that there is a safe environment where they can come and play. Um, the inclusiveness of it, I think it's also a big thing that, that I've, I've learned today uh, through this conversation. The part that um, said, that the reason why I like sports so much and why I like team sports so much is because you learn to work with others, you learn to communicate, you learn to bring what you have recognize what you still need to work a little bit on and recognize the strengths of others and just how to pull all that together and really just you know come strong to the field whatever that field is and now it's a screen so um you know i i i, I really I, I recognize that today after a conversation i like i said i had seen a little bit of that through my um own personal experience here at home uh with the communication and and, and all of that but it's it's really all just painted a beautiful picture for me of how esports is definitely worth considering um, because it breaks some of the barriers that traditional sports cannot break you know there are people out there like myself who would love to be a runner it's just not in my in my legs my legs are, you know i what i consider running is what many people would call jogging so let's just say that. Mm -hmm. you know so with something like this um you know, it, it might open up opportunities, it might open up doors for kids who might not fit into traditional sports. It's just opening another avenue um, to be part of a team, to have that experience, to just be part of the community of the sports of the Howard Community College Dragons and just maybe take it to the next level if that's what you choose to do. So thank you, Mark, for opening mm -hmm. that door. Thank you for I, bringing this to Howard Community College. I, I'm, uh, I'm glad I could enlighten at least one more person on uh, the, the beauty of that, which is esports.